Lynn from Merely Pretty One and Knits broadcasting to you today from the floor of my studio um, because this was the most practical way to make sure that I had all of my whips around me and that's what we're here to talk about today. My whips are out of control and I need help. Help me! Help me, help me, help me! To be honest, I'm not sure how you can help me. <laughs> but I am open to your suggestions. Now, specifically, um, I feel like that's poking me. Um, I am not actually kind of trying to do like a, a finisher frog thing. I don't actually want to frog any of these things. I like them all. I want to have them all. Um, but I am overwhelmed by the number of whips I have and I need to figure out a way to prioritize or to refocus my energy or something. To be honest, I feel like this is something that I've struggled with all year. I have hardly finished anything. I've started lots of things, um, but I have hardly finished anything this year. I don't know what's going on. I just cannot seem to focus on anything long enough to actually finish it. Um, so I have been battling with, you know, some starditis, but also just some loss of knitting mojo. I don't, I just, I don't know what's going on. I just can't seem to finish anything. So I'm just going to share all of my whips with you today. Um, and if you have any suggestions for how to prioritize these projects or what you think I should finish first or anything related to that, please leave a comment and let me know because I need serious help. All right, so let me real quick do a count of what I've actually got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, so I got thirteen, and that does not include a sock that I know is somewhere in this house. It's like pink and red yarn. I've shown it on the podcast before. I don't know what the hell happened to it, but somewhere in this house, I have at least, at least one more sock. And I think two actually, now that I think about it, but we'll go with 13 because that's what I've got here. 13 whips. And you know what? That doesn't count down here is a design that I have specifically put on hold until warmer weather comes back. Um, so that's actually another one, but I'm not going to talk about it today because I actively put that on hold. Um, although it is still a source of frustration because I really wanted to get a design published during the summer and I didn't, this didn't happen. All right. So let's start with the socks. Um, these, uh, I, Took these socks with me to Peru in April so they've been on the needles at least that long. Uh, this pattern is called Brayamore. It is by I want to say Annie Fletcher the person who uh, the same designer who did the um, vanilla is the new black or something something along those lines that pattern and these are a relatively straightforward sock just a little bit of offset ribbing um, along the cuff here that I hope is focusing in. Of course, there we go. A little bit of offset ribbing and then the rest of the leg is ribbing um, down to the heel. The heel has something kind of interesting going on and it's a relatively um, plain foot. The yarn is, I do this every time. The colorway is called Patina. The dyer is somebody who lives near me whose name I can never seem to remember. Not that close to me, but like in the Maryland area, close enough that they're usually at all of the Maryland fiber things. And I can never remember who it is. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just, I mean, it's, it's just a little bit of ribbing, but I, it's been on the needle since at least April. It has traveled all the way to Peru and back. I mean, so I haven't picked this up in ages. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I don't know. It's not holding my interest and I really need new socks. I, I think I have two pair of socks that don't have holes in them. Um, and I am not a big fan of patching hand knit socks just because I find that once they start sprouting holes, they just keep sprouting holes. Um, so I will repair once and then I'm done. 
but um, I really need socks. Why can't I focus on this? I don't know. Pair of socks number one. This one. Now, one of the reasons I, this is, I'm putting the heel in this now. So this is just a pair of uh, plain vanilla socks with a, come on, there we go, self-striping yarn from Nomadic Yarns called Evermore that is beautiful. I started it for the fall because it's obviously a very fallish color. It is now December, Christmas time. Uh, I did get as far as putting, starting the heel. Uh, then the needles I was using, um, the join was starting to loosen up and they were getting, um, the stitches kept getting stuck at like a rough spot at that join. Um, so I did go ahead and get some new sock needles, which is what it is on now. I just transferred it yesterday. So again, I really do need new socks and it was mostly the needles that were stopping me from working on this. Um, but I don't even have half of one sock done and I, uh, I got two feet, so I'm going to need two socks. Um, that is sock number two that is on the needles. I, I really need socks. Um, and my son has asked me to knit him a pair of socks, but I've already got two pairs of socks on the needles that I'm showing you. I know there are two more. I know there are. <laughs> this is really getting out of control. Um, That's it, two socks. And now I'm gonna show you the uh, socks that are technically on the needles. Oh, here they are, here we go, okay, so. These are some socks that I started for my sister. Again, ages ago, she wants a pair of knee-high socks. Um, I had a couple of false starts with this because I am using a sport weight yarn because she wants knee-high socks. I'm not gonna knit them on a fingering weight yarn. I don't know what this yarn is. I bought it at least two years ago specifically to knit these socks. I feel like the colorway was something to do with owls and it is really a really nice, kind of like a speckly white gray. Uh, and it's knitting up fine, but I really had to kind of experiment with my stitch pattern and the yarn weight and the needle size. I really want to give my sister a pair of knee-high socks that she has been asking for, especially since teaching her to knit her own socks has uh, so far not gotten us very far. It's too hard, too hard! But uh, they're just sitting here and there's, not, there's nothing complicated. It's a, it's a plain sole, it's a ribbing on the top of the foot and then like a small uh, cable detail. Nothing fancy. I could turn it into a pattern if I wanted to, you know, eventually. Um, and then they look okay on the needles and I'm using a size three with a sport weight yarn, but I'm still like, they get a little stretched out and they're looking like they even might be too big. But the whole point of knitting on a, with a sport weight yarn was that I wanted to use bigger needles so they would be done faster. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so that's another pair of socks that's on the needles, but is not for me. There's no way there's going to be done for Christmas. <laughs> My sister's birthday is in January. I mean, in theory, could I knit a pair of socks by then? Yes. Am I going to? Not with like 12 other whips to be working on. <laughs> uh, I'm the worst. I'm saving the sweaters for last is what I'm doing. So, <sighs> okay. What else is not a sweater? This is a design I started on with, uh, that I showed in the last video with the yarn review. Um, but in case you didn't see that, this is a double thick, double sided scarf, or at least it will be someday. Um, so I'm starting with a, a tapered bo uh, bottom point, I don't know. Um, that I was kind of planning to put like a tassel on. Um, and then the rest is, it's identical front and back, but you know, this way you don't get the ugly side of a cabled scarf and you're always knitting in the round. You don't have any pearl rows. Um, it is all over cabled, but it is a, it is a very light DK weight yarn. Um, and 
even cabling without a cable needle, these cables here are a little slow. This is like a decrease cable, so you increase on one row, um, and then on the next row or the row after that, you as you're working the cable, you decrease out the extra stitches, which just gives them um, a little bit more pop. They kind of stick out a little bit because you're altering the number of stitches. Anyway, I really like it. I want to have this pattern done and ready for December, which it already is. Um, it is December 6th today. Now, end of December would be fine, but still, it is going slow. Um, I'm, I don't have to look at a chart for any of these side cables, but the center cable, I do have to keep my eye on the chart. Um, it's not as easy to memorize. So it's just not the kind of project I can like easily pick up, carry with me, you know, I need light to read the chart. Um, so like tonight we're going to do the drive through Christmas lights, but I, I can't bring this because I won't be able to see anything. Um, and I mean, obviously, technically there's no deadline. I don't have to have the pattern done, but I just, one, I want this scarf, and two, I would like to have another pattern before the end of the year. Uh, I'm not really a designer anymore in that I, you know, I'm doing it as my primary uh, source of income, but I am still enjoying doing it here and there, um, and just would like to get one more accomplished. But, I mean, you know, that's not we're talking about a scarf that is pretty darn small so it's another one <sighs> all right other things that aren't a sweater i forgot one there's another sweater here darn it what is it i have to find it all right i did find it so i guess now we're up to to 15 but let's uh let's keep talking about things that aren't sweaters for a minute My one and only crochet project. I haven't picked this up in ages. It's a blanket. I love it. I still want to have a blanket. I'm a little concerned that the cast on edge is looking, or the chain edge, I don't know if it's what it's called in crochet, is looking a little tight, but uh, also it blocks into points, so that might be okay. Um, I mean, this is easy to pick up and put down and it's, you know, it's a lot easier than um, knitting where you've got to like leave things on a needle. You just, whoops, just, um, or at least I have been pulling out the, the last uh, stitch that I've worked so it doesn't unravel um, and just toss it in the bag. I think it's going to make a really cute blanket. I'm happy with, you know, the, the, way the stitch pattern is looking um, but crochet is not my primary <laughs> um, craft and I just uh, haven't been making a lot of time for it I do really like the colors and and the way they're looking um, I guess I'm okay with this kind of languishing but at the same time I would like to have a blanket. Just got a long way to go, is is what I'm saying here. Um, so I'm using like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so far seven. I think it uses eight different colors. So I haven't even used all the colors once yet. I'm looking, I need like a, a dark gray, almost black, I think, to add to this. And it's the only thing I haven't really been able to find in my stash. Um, I don't know. Do I need to have like crochet day where I just crochet on this blanket and do no knitting? I don't know. But that's still there. It's still hanging around. All right. I have one more thing that's not a sweater. And this, oh, all right, this is the start of a baby bear suit for my nephew uh, who was born in June. I was originally hoping to make this a Christmas gift. However, uh, my brother and sister-in-law are 
heading back to Peru on like the 14th of December. <laughs> this is not going to be, and we're going to see them on the 10th um, before they leave. This is not going to be done by the 10th. That's in four days. And uh, I just started working on the body. Um, it's summertime in Peru, so it's not like the baby would be wearing this there. Um, it will not be useful until they come back um, in January. It still would have been nice to be able to have it done to give as a Christmas gift, though. Um, the complication with this is that I originally picked out a pattern for this. Um, and when I was ready to start it, I was reading through the pattern and realized that it was knit from the bottom up. So you had to knit the arms and legs first and then join everything together. So you had to knit the legs and then join everything together for the body and then you had to knit the arms. And no, that, that was never gonna happen. However, there's some elements of that pattern that I liked. Um, it has um, a doubled, um, a doubled over, I don't know, part of around the head a collar ish thing um, and it has uh, fold over sleeves you know because babies sometimes scratch and things um, so I found another pattern <laughs> the second pattern I found was knitting for olive uh, so I decided to take the second pattern which was a top down um, and just incorporate some of the elements from the other one so there's a lot of improvising going on with this I'm just kind of <laughs> making up the stitch counts. Um, this is gonna have to be a priority. And I just need to tell myself that it's okay that it's not actually gonna be done for Christmas because he wouldn't be using it in Peru. You know, it's, it's 75 degrees there every day. He's not going to wear this. It is a wool, it's a really nice yarn. Uh, this is Valley Yarns uh, Northfield. So it's Merino Wool Alpaca Silk. So it's a wool, uh, it's a little, it's a little frou-frou for a baby, but this might be kind of like an heirloom piece. It's like baby bear suit. Um, it's very, very soft and it's a very nice yarn. So I am liking that, uh, but it certainly would not be worn in the summer anywhere. Definitely not Lima where it's very humid. So here it is. It's going, I'm working on it, but I, I have to come to terms with the fact that it's not going to be done for Christmas. Okay, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sweaters. I don't know how this happened. Okay, let's start with this one. This is a test knit that's supposed to be done tomorrow. Uh, this is a test knit I am doing for, and when I say tomorrow, I mean tomorrow, Thursday, December 7th, not the day you are watching this. Uh, this is a test knit for Tiff Knits, Tiffany Hand Knits, something like that. Her name's Tiffany. <laughs> um, it is a lovely lace yoke, circular pull over. So I am done the yoke, which is the hardest part. I'm now doing the body, which is very easy. Um, and the sleeves are relatively easy as well. The yarn it seems a little stiff. I'm a little, I'm a little not sure how this is going to block out. Um, I mean, it really, and obviously this is going to look much nicer when it is blocked out. Um, and it's, she's a very smart, way of incorporating all of the yoke increases into this lace. Very clever. Um, I am a little concerned about the yarn. It's not, uh, it's not like itchy or anything. It just feels a little stiff. Um, so it's, it's been okay to work with. Um, a little slow because it's not as, as smooth and slippery as some other yarns. And I, and I mean, I have done, you know, mostly the, the body in the last like two days. Um, but I'm really sad. I'm clearly I'm not <laughs> gonna have this done by the deadline and I feel bad. Um, but I do wanna, so I do wanna focus on getting this done, obviously if not by the deadline, 
very, very shortly thereafter. And like I said, the sleeves are plain, the body is plain. It's basically just stockinette in the round now and then um, picking up a collar. So it shouldn't be too terrible. But uh, yeah, the yarn is, I don't know, this feels a little, a little crunchy. Not, uh, not my ideal yarn. We'll see how it, I've got a swatch around here somewhere and I don't remember thinking that the swatch seemed really meh. So hopefully a nice block will help. Then we have my long suffering Amelie cardigan. So this is knit with three strands of lace weight yarn held together. It is looking pretty marled in the camera. It doesn't look quite that marled in real life. Um, and you know, I'm just doing the sleeves, just working in the round, very simple. Um, I really want to have this sweater. <laughs> I've been working on it, I think since the, the last winter. Um, gonna be lovely it has a, not, a lot of nice little finishing details and and special touches like this but the vast majority of it is just stockinette so it's kind of slow going especially the body which was worked flat now I'm doing a sleeve so that is is moving quicker and it is knit on larger needles these are us 9 um, but yeah at this point it's getting really hard to get psyched for so much stockinette um, like I said, sleeves going a little faster since they're in the round, but uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, even this is knit with three strands of lace weight, but it is, it's pretty light and airy. Um, so maybe this is not a sweater that I need in the dead of winter and I want to save it for the early spring. I don't, I don't know. But also I feel like I've been working on it forever. <laughs> so I, you know, I need finish this sleeve, another sleeve, all of the, the trim. Um, and like I said, the, a lot of the nice details are in the trim. So maybe that will make it, once I get started on that, make it more inspiring to work on. So um, this is a pattern by Mochi Knits and I actually translated it into English from the original Spanish. Um, and it is lovely. And I've been translating a lot of her patterns. So check her out. She has some really, uh, she just has really nice finishing details. A lot of her stuff is more minimal, but the detailing on it is so nice. Oh my god, this one. I love this so much. And I haven't worked on this in months, I want to say. So my great gingham raglan is <sighs> languishing. I love these colors. I think it is working up so nicely. Uh, I like I think my, my gauge is nice and even. The fabric is working up nicely. The yarn is nice and soft, but I just, with so many other things on the needles, I keep, honestly, keep forgetting I even have it until suddenly I see the bag. I'm like, oh yeah, what's in there? And here it is. I mean, this would be, this would have been great again for the fall. These are very fallish colors, but no, I couldn't get my act together. So again, another one that is languishing. would be really nice especially in the winter with that kind of double thick fabric from the from the floats I don't know I kind of want to prioritize this one but oh, so much else going on okay so that may be coming into more focus I hope I just I got so much going on. all right this one I'm showing you just because I have it this has been, if you have watched uh, the podcast before, you know this has been on my needles forever. I can't remember what this is called. This is my, do I have the pattern name? This is my, it's a pattern by Michelle Wang. Yeah, I don't, I'll put it, yeah. This has been on my needles forever. I absolutely love it. I love the yarn. I'm using a discontinued yarn. This is Magpie Fibers Domestic Worsted. The colorway is Norwegian Wood. I love that. Um, but this is a drop shoulder, which basically means you had to knit the front and back exactly the same. And I haven't finished one or the other. So whether this is the front or the back, it's still not done. And I still got to knit a whole nother one. 
It has worked flat. Um, over time, I have been able to mostly memorize the pat the cabling pattern, so I just have to kind of glance at the chart, which is not in the bag, and I hope is somewhere around here. I think it might be on the floor over there. The studio is a real mess. Um, I haven't worked on this in ages, not a stitch, and I love it, and I really want this sweater. But I just like knowing that I'm gonna have to re-knit the exact same thing all over again for the back or in the front, whatever the case may be. It is really putting up like a mental block for me. But I love this. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at the stitch definition, all these stitch patterns. I wanted to show that to you just because the bag is here and technically it is a whip, but I haven't, I haven't touched this in ages. And I don't know when I'm ever gonna get back to it. It really is so beautiful though. Oh, all these cables. So there we go, another one. I'm also not entirely sure I have enough of this yarn. Like I said, it is a discontinued yarn. Um, I have five skeins, which in my head, I was like, oh, five skeins, that's enough for a sweater. Except it's an all over cabled sweater, which didn't occur to me. So that's another reason that I'm like, mm, what if I run out of yarn? I can't, I literally can't get the yarn anymore. Should I even bother? Here it is. Okay. All right. This one I was just showing on the last video. Uh, with the yarn review this is my aisle pullover that i actually just started um, not just started but recently like in the fall started um so this is a pattern by brianna mason and uh i'm still working on the yoke increases so this is a uh, raglan yoke worked in the round yarn is nice to work with um and given that you know i started this relatively really recently um, and how much uh, knitting mojo I am struggling with I actually have made some pretty decent progress here um, and this is working out pretty quickly it's a US 10 I think yeah US 10 needle and Aran weight yarn and this this is one that I actually have been working on just because it is interesting enough to, to kind of keep my focus on it but I don't have to like check charts or keep you know going back to the pattern the you know the, the pattern of um, because some of the raglan increases are done purl wise and some are knit wise and there's ribbing and there's stockinette it's enough to like you know hold my interest but not get too boring being just stockinette so I really love this color and I kind of want to prioritize this sweater but it is so far from being done and I have so many sweaters that it feels like maybe I should take a rest on it. I don't know. There's that. Okay. What else? What else? All right. I started this, I don't even know if it was this year. Was it this year? As a test knit and the designer said um, that a small section of the pattern would be um, wrong side row cables, which generally speaking look bad and are a pain in the butt to work. Um, but when she said small, she apparently meant the entire yoke. So of course the body is worked in the round, but the yoke uh, is largely worked flat back and forth because you have armholes and you can no longer work in the round. Um, so when I realized that and I pointed it out and said, um, Hey, you said a small part of this would involve wrong side row cables, but it's actually like a third of the sweater. She was like, uh, I was like, is that a mistake? And she said, no. And I just put it on hold. Um, I do love this sweater. It is really beautiful. Uh, um, and I love the yarn which is um, Durham Natura Elise, and the colorway is arable. Absolutely beautiful, very fallish. Um, and what annoyed me most about that situation was that making a minor adjustment to the chart would have created a situation in which most of the yoke would not be wrong side row cables, except uh, an once you reach the point where you had to work short rows. Um, but it's her pattern, her choice. However, for myself, I went ahead and tweaked the chart, ripped all the way back to the ribbing to restart so that all of the cable crosses ended up on 
what are ultimately right side rows. So when I do get to the yoke and have to work flat, all of my cable crosses are on right side rows. <laughs> Uh, I guess it just kind of put a, left a bad taste in my mouth for the pattern. Um, but I really would like to get back to this. But as you, I have so much more work on this. Now, this is just a tiny bit of the body. Um, so I do want to get back to this at some point. But I have, it's not a top priority for me. Just because as much as I love, love, love the yarn and the color and the actual sweater, I've got a lot of other sweaters here um, in more advanced stages than this. We're almost done. All right, this is the sweater that I am closest to being done. But I have also been working on it forever. So this is my heirloom jumper. The entire body is done. Most of this sleeve is done. So I just need to knit another sleeve and then um, there's a little bit of uh, finishing on the back of the neck. It has a button closure at the back. I would love to wear this for Christmas. So I, and it, it's entirely doable, except that I have that other test knit that I really need to focus on. I have not started any gift knits. Um, like I said, my son wants a pair of socks. My other son um, wants a balaclava. Um, and I still need to finish sewing the skirt for Christmas. <laughs> But it's still, it's entirely doable, so we'll see. Um, so I think this might be priority number two after that test knit um, and gift knits. I don't know. Anyway, um, this is, it's so close to being done, and the yarn is absolutely beautiful. So I've got, this is a Knitting for Olive uh, silk mohair. I don't remember what colorway it is. Here it is. Uh, in deep petroleum blue and I do have another ball of it and then the main color which I have quite a bit of left and I thought I would need more um, is this sapphire from fiber for the people and they're just they're beautiful together and I love it so I think other than that test knit I think this is gonna be my my next priority in terms of finishing <sighs> If I get closer and stretch it out a little bit, you can see some of the that lace work. So nice. So yeah, that's the closest. This is the closest thing I've come to finishing a sweater this year, I think. We're getting there. But again, I have been working on this a really long time. Um, because that uh, that center lace panel and the um, the in combination with the increases to create that little bit of a puff sleeve it's kind of a, a high focus project okay it's the last one this uh, is a design for a sweater that i wanted to have for the winter so i am using come on brain you can do it wool dreamers moda Dreamers Moda, and this is a uh, kind of a twisted fisherman's rib, ultimately, uh, drop shoulder that I am working from the bottom up. Uh, I am working it flat, um, which I explained in another video. Um, working fisherman's rib flat, aside from the seaming aspect, is actually easier than working it in the round. Um, and it's fine. It's an easy project in that it's easy to memorize it's easy to work it's more interesting than stockinette the only problem is uh, to create a fisherman's rib you essentially are knitting every other stitch into the row below on both sides and it's just very slow <laughs> um so you can see i'm stopped in the middle of a row which is annoying uh, i have been working on this forever and i've got uh i don't know what is that maybe seven and a half, eight inches of sweater body. And I still need a, a back of the sweater and I still need sleeves. Um, this is definitely a winter sweater because this is a, a, a nice, sturdy, warm wool yarn and that uh, the fisherman's rib is creating that very thick 
fabric. So this is not a sweater pattern I can release in like April. Nobody's going to wear this sweater in April. So it's obviously not getting done for like January. Um, very unlikely for February. So do I just put it aside and wait, you know, until the fall comes around again and release it in, let's say, um, September. And that's going to give you a month or two to knit it for next fall, next winter. I don't know. Am I even going to remember what I'm doing with it if I do that? I don't know that either. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I really haven't worked on this in, in probably a month. Um, just because now I'm, I just, I don't know if it's worth time, my limited knitting time right now. All right, so there you have it. All of my whips, except for a couple of socks that have mysteriously disappeared. Please help me figure out how to prioritize these projects, how to move forward. As I said, I, I don't really want to frog anything. There's nothing inherently wrong with any of these projects. None of them are the wrong size or the wrong yarn choice or anything like that. Um, I want to have all of these finished things. I just am now have created a situation in which I have so many whips. I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what to focus on. I am having trouble prioritizing and I need an outside opinion some outside perspective on this, this situation that I have gotten myself into. So suggestions, comments, recommendations, commiseration, anything, please leave a comment and let me know what you think of uh, how I can handle this mess. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, I hope you will give it a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe. Lots of great knitting related content here, tutorials, vlogs, podcasts, etc. Thank you again for joining me uh, in this trip through my whips and I will see you again soon in another video.